Oh, God. That's very nasty, Kelly. What the hell's happened? What's it look like? Your idea of a little joke, wasn't it, Kelly? Oh, come on. She needs to get to a doctor. Oh, I don't know what you're so concerned about, Desmond. It was a setup. You were meant to be caught with my dead body. So that's why you put me here. Oh, no, I didn't. You low down bitch. <laughs> Well, don't just stand there, Deacon. Go and get the sister. Don't want your little mate to bleed to death. <laughs> oh. such a bad idea. Oh, no, Desmond. This one's going to suffer for a long time yet. But, well, when we saw Shane, we forgot about everything else. We knew instinctively that he was the child for us. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. I'm really glad you're here, Joan. You're not well, gonna so play am I. I don't, play I don't have many don't close play friends, play. and... God's the... He let me hit oh. me with the bat. I wasn't doing anything. Oh. It's not my fault. She asked for it. Shane, did you do that? She asked for it. She was cheating. I told her she was making me mad. And that's no excuse for hitting her. She hit me first. Well, I did not. You did too. Now, cut it out. That's enough. I think a bit of first aid's needed here. No. Now listen, mate. This is just not on. What you did to yourself. You're not me sister, and you're not me parents. You're just a bunch of rug bears, and I hate the bloody liar. Come on, come on. Come on. Shane, I am thoroughly ashamed of what you but just I did. Don't I... interrupt me. Now, I thought I knew you better than anyone, Shane, but that vicious little bully I just saw in there, that isn't the Shane I know. Told her lies, didn't you? You knew I loved her best, so you turned her against me. Well, I don't care, because I don't need any of you. Is he okay? He's asleep, finally. Good. I thought he was going to cry all night. How's Tracy? Out like a light. She'll be all right. She tends to be a bit melodramatic sometimes. <laughs> Only this time she had good cause. Joan, about tonight, I know how much you love Shane, but, well, what he said to me, and Hell, I'm making a botch of this. What Bob means is that no, we you really... You don't have to explain yourselves to me. You're Shane's parents. But you have a vested interest, Joan. It's not that simple. No, it isn't. And that's not the problem, is it? I am. Shane and Tracy are always fighting. Your being here doesn't make any difference. Doesn't it? Uh, the boy's confused and it's no wonder. I keep telling him that he's got to learn to be part of your family. And yet my being around all the time only reminds him of the family that we once were. But we all agreed it would be best for Shane. We were wrong. You saw the way he turned to me tonight. But he's so dependent on you. It's only natural. It's very flattering. But it's no good for Shane. A boy can have too many parents. But we all... No, Marnie. Joan's right. Shane may call her Auntie Joan, but in his heart, she's his mother. Then what do we do? Just what you have been doing, providing him with a good home and family. And I'll bow out gracefully. Well, it doesn't have to be completely, Joan, surely. Yes, yes, it does, Bob. Shane needs time to settle. And he never will if I'm around. Come on, Kelly. It's all right, Mrs. Radcliffe, I'll take over. The governor wants to see her. Thanks, Joan. We've had her. Right. How's the hand, Kelly? Okay. Oh, it's a pity. I heard you were going to lose a couple of fingers. Yeah, well, you heard wrong. I need them all for answering you, Miss Ferguson. <laughs> I don't think you'll be answering back too much, Kelly. I'm going to be around for a bloody long time, so I wouldn't count on it. I've got friends in here to help me. Hmm, so I heard. I bet Desmond just can't wait to welcome you back. What are you up to, Brady? Oh, um, Miss Ferguson, I've just got a dirty mark on my dress. I'm just going to sponge it off. You better sponge your cell down while you're at it. It's disgusting. 
What's wrong with it? I've already cleaned it up. Mr. Crookshank showed me how to make the bed and everything. Did he? Well, I'd better have a word with him. Look at this, your pillow not straight, not tucked in around all right, the edges. Okay, I'll fix it up. And I'll don't leave it. your dirty clothes on the bed. It is not dirty, it's all been cleaned. Really? Ugh, perhaps you'd better move him, Brady. Someone might catch something. Face it, Brady. You're a natural slob. And don't get used to this clothing rubbish either. You're going to be in prison uniform straight after your trial. So get used to the idea. Well, clean it up. Yes, that'll be fine, Mr Warren. Goodbye. Come in. I was just about to buzz you. I've given permission to Marlene's parents to visit and I was wondering if you could... Uh... You all right? I've just had a phone call. My father's been admitted to hospital. He's dying. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Yes, well, I must admit it's fortunate you came as quickly as you did. You don't think he'll pull through this time? I'm sorry. Is he in pain? No, 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 he's quite comfortable. But there is one thing you should know before you go in, Miss Ferguson. He knows that he won't recover from this one, but he's chosen to pretend that he will. I guess he just wants to make it easy on his family. Is my brother here? No. The Major spoke to him on the phone and convinced him he needn't come down. But surely but if That's it's... the way he wants it. He's a very brave man. You ready to see him now? Yes. Good. Tell me they put you in a panic and got you away from your job. No, of course not. I had some leave due to me, and when I heard you weren't well, I just thought I'd make the trip. You're a good girl. You know, I could be out of here before you have to go back. Perhaps we could do another spot of fishing, eh? <laughs> she could have brought Shane with me, but the oh, school... I got it? a letter the other day. It's in the drawer there somewhere. His new family is going to... Let him have Nicky with him, and Shane wanted to know if I'd mind parting with the dog. <laughs> you know, they're a very nice family. Their name's Taylor. I visit them quite a lot. In fact, I'm auntie to them all. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, I wish things could have turned out the way we'd planned, but... Well, it's nice to know that you've both got... A good family you can be a part of. Father? Father, can I get you anything? Oh, no, no. Just a bit tired. Well, don't you worry about going to sleep. The more sleep you get, the sooner you'll be up and about. You're a good girl. Oh, we had our problems in the past, but... No more. No more. No, I love you, don't you? I'll be here when you... when you wake up. Jim. Jim, my dear. Oh, I'm sorry. Must have dozed off. Can I get you a drink or anything? No. My hand. Hold my hand. You know what I was just thinking? I was just remembering that time, you know, just after the war when you took me to that victory parade. Oh, I must have been about four years old at the time. You had your medals on and had me up on your shoulders and you were so proud. You were showing me off and introducing me to everyone and you... Sister. I'm sorry. He's gone. 
if you'd like a few minutes. Sorry to hear about your father. Yes, Joe, my condolences. Uh, I never met the Major, but Meg told me what a fine man he was. Thank you. We didn't expect you back till the end of the week. Yeah, well, I, uh, I changed my mind. Might as well keep busy. Guess this is all I've got left now. You want to see me, Governor? Yes, take a seat. How are you? All right. You feel up to work so soon after the funeral? Yes, yes, I'm fine, really. And um, thank you very much for the wreath. I really appreciate everyone remembering. A lot of people here thought very highly of him, Miss Ferguson. Now, I'm sorry to have to bring this up at such a time, but uh, this letter's been forwarded to me by Ray Proctor. You can understand my concern. The allegations against you are very serious. Did you try to force Proctor into injuring King? Lies. You know what these animals are like? It's not only Keane's signature. Proctor's a civilian. Yes, well, that self-confessed drunk would have been pressured into it by Keane. And we both know that it's not the first time she's tried to have a go at me. It wasn't presented until they both left Wentworth. I failed to see the point, if that's the case. Well, all I can say, Governor, is that that cook had better stick to his trade. Because trumped-up charges like this that could have been written by anyone would be laughed out of court. In most cases, yes. But we've seen Keane, and she's prepared to confirm the contents. And Ray Proctor will back her up. This is just a copy, of course. I had no option, because of the seriousness of the charges, but to send the original to the department. No, no doubt they'll soon see it for the fraud that it is, and that will be the end of the matter. Yes, well, we'll see. Will that be all, Governor? Yes, but I suggest you be on your best behaviour until the department's finished its investigation. Of course. Oh, so... Keen's causing trouble there too, is she? <laughs> uh, well then, I'm sure you won't mind giving me a hand with a little problem that I seem to have here, Cynthia. Huh? Good. I knew I could count on you. Oh, I guess I got it a bit wrong, eh? Hey, you sure did. <laughs> <laughs> what are you two doing in here? Oh, sorry, Miss Ferguson. I mustn't have heard the bell. Yeah, I'll bet. Just because you two are engaged, you think you can flaunt the rules, don't you? Well, I've got news for you. You're both on a charge. You wipe that stupid smirk off your face, Warren, or you'll be cleaning lavatory bowls for the next week. Sorry, Miss Ferguson. Get out. Oh. Next week's rosters. Something wrong? You could say that. Oh, what's happened? Not Mr Fry again. No, Keen. She's changed her mind. About the letter? What letter? She now says she's neither seen nor heard of one, and she is not about to lie for a bunch of screws. What's the matter? Soup not good enough for you? No, I'm just not hungry. Come on, Kelly, you're not here for conversation. You want me to leave it? She hasn't finished. Why not? Think I'll keep you here a bit longer if you don't eat, Grant. No, I don't. You'd do anything to shirk work, wouldn't you? Now eat. Is that it? I can't. I'm really. I'm, I'm just not hungry. Please don't make me eat it. Looks to me like a blatant waste of good food. Wouldn't you say so, Kelly? Whatever you say, Miss Ferguson. I bet you worked your fingers to the bone making it too. Hmm? Help Mr Pringle, sure. Seems a pity no one's going to eat it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, is there, Kelly? Wouldn't put any prizes, but it's all right. Good. Then you eat it. Look, I got my tea coming up. Besides, I hate soup. Eat it, Kelly. All of it. No buts, Kelly. 
Now, if you don't eat it, I might just get the idea that there's something wrong with it, eh? And then the governor would have to send it off to be analysed, and you yourself said that you made it. <coughs> Too bad, Grant. Look, you're missing out on all that nourishment. chat with you about that uh, zip gun business I bet you did still if you're not feeling up to it uh, we can scratch that one off the list can't we I'm sure there'll be lots more we can talk about now Kelly you just look after yourself hey eh? you don't look at all well maybe it was something you ate I promise I'll get you! Oh. oh, don't mind me. You know, I've always wanted to try that, but somehow I never had the build for it. Oh, well, I'm sure you could learn. You'd be surprised how well the women are doing. I would have asked you to join in, but I didn't really didn't think... think you'd... that I'd be here for much longer, hmm? Oh, no. Well... Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, how eager everyone was to believe that letter. And I suppose everybody knows by now. Oh, not the women. Of course, we heard. And please, don't be too upset about Meg and Dennis. They... It's all right, Mrs Barry. You haven't dobbed them in. I already knew. There are some people still who respect me as an officer. Well, now that Proctor and Keane have backed down, there's no harm done, is there? Well, not for the time being, anyway. You know, somehow it doesn't seem to matter much anymore. Uh, Joan, about your father. We were all really sorry to hear about his death. If there's anything I can do... No, uh, thank you, Mrs Barry. You see, I've always been able to manage on my own. I expect I'll manage now. Yes, of course. Well, I'll get on the notes. I won't be long. Morning, Joan. Have you seen our Etty all over the front page? We'd better get to work. All right. Just a all minute. Right. I want a word with you two. Joan, if you're looking for a fight, A let's... fight with you, I wouldn't bother. Now, look, hang about. You this... self-righteous hypocrites. Oh, I've known never to expect any help or sympathy from you two, but to wait until my father was dying to stab me in the back is quite the lowest thing I've ever heard of. It does seem that way, Joan, but the timing wasn't our fault. We just did what we thought was best. Save your breath, Meg. She doesn't want to know the truth. Truth? You wouldn't know it if it hit you. Oh, not so much you, Crookshank. You've never made any bones about hating my guts, but this one, she's done nothing but stab me in the back since the day I arrived, and all the time hiding under that little goody two-shoes image. Now, that's enough, John. We won't take that from you or... And neither will I. Now, get it through your heads. The only way you're ever going to see the back of me is when I'm good and ready to leave. And that's not going to be for a long, long time. talk about. He hit me. They don't want me. Oh, come on, Shane. He's just trying to be a good dad. He's not me dad. Okay. Come on, sit down and tell me what happened. I didn't do nothing. Just went to the pinball joint with some mates. And? When I got home, he hit me. Well, there must have been a reason, Shane. He was probably very worried. He wouldn't have hit me if he was worried. What about your... Mrs. Taylor, what did she say? Nothing. Just sat there crying. Shane, if you had told them where you were going, there wouldn't have been an argument. No, 
a mate. It's called give and take. You can't have everything your own way. Yeah, I suppose so. It's a good boy. Come on, I'll take you home. No, I won't go. I just want to be with you. Shane, we have been through all this before. Now you know what the court said. I don't care what the court said, and I don't care how many times you take me back, because I'll always run away. You do want me to stay, don't you? No. What? No, I don't want you to stay. Look, we're, we're mates, Shane. We're mates, and that's just fine. But I, I've got my own life to lead. I'm sorry. I, I've got a job and uh, a life of my own, and I just can't have you under my feet night and day. It's not true. You're lying. I'm just not cut out for that kind of responsibility. I don't want you. I need you home. Come on, I'll take you home. No. You don't have to do anything for me ever again. <sighs> Shut up. Tucked her in, but she wants you to give her a good night kiss. I will in a sec. Stop worrying. He'll be back soon. It's dark outside. Joe, come in. Is Shane with you? No, isn't he here? I'm going to call the police. No, don't. Look, he's probably cooling off somewhere. We had a bit of a falling out. Well, I think you better tell us about it. It could be important. All right. If you think it'll help. I, I'm afraid I was um, pretty hard on him. I, I said a lot of things that I don't really mean. Like, uh, I have my own life to lead and uh, there's no room in it for him. Oh, no, the poor kid. Joan did the right thing. He's been missing you the past few weeks. I think that's half the cause of the blow-up today. Yes, well, I, I haven't been in touch. Um, my father died. Oh, Joan, I'm so sorry. Oh, I knew it was coming. He'd been buying time for quite a while. doesn't lessen the pain. Did you tell Shane about your father? No, no, I didn't think it was fair. They were very close. If you like, we'll explain it to him. Thank you. Look, I really think I'd better go. I don't want him to find me here. It looks a bit like telling tales. Thanks for coming, Joan. And thanks for... Well, I don't think I could have done it. You're very brave. He's a good kid, Marnie. Don't be too hard on him. And then home. Deal? Deal. Who is it? Bob Taylor. Oh. Come in. What's happened? He hasn't turned up yet, Joan. And I'm worried sick. The police need some help, so I thought oh, you might. Of course. Come on in. Right. What can I do? Well, you were the last person to see Miss Ferguson. Uh, could you confirm what he was wearing? Oh, it was a uh, black... Black duffel coat yeah. and blue jeans. That's right. That's we're right. hoping you might be able to think of some other place he could have gone. We're running his schoolmates. No one's seen him. Could he have gone to his father? Oh, no. No, he wouldn't go there. He hates his father. Well, did the two of you have any favourite places? Somewhere that might have had happy memories for him. 
Well, there was Luna Park. They've already checked there. Oh. Um, I, I took him roller skating once at the local shopping complex and uh, there was a McDonald's nearby and we uh, had something to eat there, but apart from that I can't think of anything. Well, that's fine. We'll check into these and let you know. You'll be staying here tonight? If that's all right with you. Of course, of course. Thank you, Miss Ferguson. Thank you, Constable. Go. Just one on the right. Watch it. Come on, only 20 points to go. There's, there's a right over at 9 o'clock. Hey, watch it. Come on, you little nerd. I didn't do nothing. He did. He lost his record now. It's your fight. You're doing. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. All right, boys. Take it easy. It was only watching. Yeah, well, he lost my record score. Oh, yeah. Well, that ought to take care of that. Come on, mate, it's getting a bit crowded around here. Let him through. Thanks, mister. I can't pay you back to it. Forget it. Can't eat any more. Shame to waste it. Go on, it's yours. You live around here? Nah, just passing through. Where are you heading? It's not the best of nights to be out on the road. It's okay. No, I suppose so. Listen, if you're stuck for somewhere to sleep for the night, I've got a spare bed. Nah, I'll be okay. Uh, suit yourself. See you. Get your feet off the chair, dear. Okay, Mum. Thanks. Bye. Ah, he hasn't turned up. Mum says Trace is okay, so. Oh, funny, I hadn't turned him away. None of this would have happened. Oh, come on now. You did the right thing. He'd already run away by the time he got to you. You didn't make him do that. Look, I'm going to drive around for a while and check out those places you tell the police have done. Well, look, he won't come back here, so why don't we all go? At least we'll be doing something positive. Yes. Let's go. Take a look at some of the shots there. The great ones. And they're all about your age, too. The money they make, $20 just for passing for a few photographs. It's unreal. Hey, what's this? I've got to go. Why? You're not worried about the photos, are you? That's art. You don't worry about clothes when you take shots like that. Relax. Get lost! That's not very nice, kid. You cost me money. No, what do the police say? They've searched this area thoroughly. We're wasting our time. What do we do now? Well, Joe's got a bee in her bonnet. He may have gone to Monaguita. She took him fishing there once with her father. But that's miles away. How would he get there? We're talking about Shane, love. He's a smart kid. It's 
all right, son. It's all right. I hurt my ankle. Oh, thank God you're all right. Looks like you're going to have a trip to the hospital. If you run away again, you'll have to limp. I'm sorry. All right, I won't run away again. Joan, you coming? G'day, Auntie Jane. G'day, young fella. Oh, come on, don't keep me in suspense. How are you? Pretty good. It's the second time you've had to fish me out of water, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, these things happen. The main thing is you're OK. Hmm? I was expecting help from Mum and Dad, or the tailors, but they've been taking care of me real good, just like you used to do. I love you very much, Shane. You must always remember that. Yeah, well, caused me enough hassles, haven't I? Mm-hmm. Guess what Trace did? Oh, you two haven't been fighting again, no. have you? She made me a card. Oh. Gave it to Mum and Dad and bring it in this morning. It's a bit sissy, but it's not bad, is it? No, it's not bad. Guess she likes me, hey? Yep, I guess she does. Listen, I better go or I'm going to be late for work. Listen, you look after yourself. And I want you to let your parents know that uh, there's a really nice young man underneath that rough head of yours. I'll do my best. I know you will. Honey Joan, Mum and Dad told me about the mage dying. If I had have known, it wouldn't have been so rotten to you. Shane, I, I didn't see any point in upsetting us both. Gee, I'm going to miss him. I know why he sent me away too. Wanted me to go back to the tailors, didn't you? I knew it was only an act. A job fooling you, young fella. Well, you don't have to give me a kiss or anything, but how about a goodbye hug? Sure. Shouldn't you be at the... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise. Oh, don't go, Miss Ferguson. The woman told me about your father. I'm very sorry. Thank you for your thought. Judy said he was a lovely man. If you want to talk about it at all. No, I don't think so. I know what it's like to lose someone. Selby, I said no. Now, uh, you may have been some sort of confessor on the outside, but in here you're just another inmate. That means you've got quite a bit of work to get done before lunch, so I suggest you get on with it. Troublemaker Patterson, it's about time you're cut down to size. You enjoy it, don't you, pushing people around? <laughs> Just as well your father carpet. What did you say? With a daughter like you, it's a wonder he didn't commit suicide. You are gonna be very sorry you ever said that. Tell me one thing. Of course. Do you think that there is an afterlife? I believe there is, yes. But I'm afraid if you ask me to prove it, I can't. I don't suppose that's much help to you, is it? Yes, yes, but it's not quite what I expected you to say. I thought that nuns had to be more positive about things like that. There's nothing very special about nuns. We're like anyone else. It's just that we've chosen a particular path in life. And found peace. Yes. Sometimes. Peace is in yourself and in loving and sharing with others. Was your father all that you loved? Oh, no, no, there was a young boy I've looked after. Shane is his name. I, I love him, but I lost him. Oh, he didn't die. I just felt it was better if he lived with a proper family. You remember what our Lord said, love thy neighbor? Yes. I don't suppose you realized you were doing just that, did you? <laughs> well, no, no, I, I never thought of it that way. I loved my father and family, just the same as you. But I also loved our Heavenly Father. So I, too, had to make a choice. And I've never regretted it. Tell me, do you think that, uh, that prayer would have, would have helped my father when he was so ill? Well, that's something that no one can answer. But prayer never hurts. Oh, 
you doing here, Patterson? What's it look like? Where did you get those? Borrowed them from the laundry. It's just taken them back. Well, yeah, yeah. Maybe you think that rules are made just to be broken, eh? Well, it's time you were taught a lesson. Look, stop it, please! You're hurting me! Yes, I know, Patterson. No, stop it! Please, I can't see. You'll see soon enough, my girl. <laughs> And your girlfriend? Not to roll man off, didn't you? Bloody place is full of murderers. Hey! Cut that out! Righto, who started it? Mrs. Barry, I saw it. You're on a charge, Burke. Don't be bloody stupid. What did you say? Right, that's two charges, Burke. Dumb insolence and fighting. You've lost privileges for the rest of the week. Hey, hey. oh, that's enough out of you lot. Get on with your food or you'll all be on charges. <laughs> no. Oh, that's mild. Haven't seen anything yet. That's why we call it a freak. Mm -hmm. I'll get you for that, you bitch. Miss Ferguson, do you think you could put Marlene back in the laundry? Why? Well, she's trying to lose a bit of weight. For the wedding. We think the kitchen might be too much of a temptation. I mean, if we can keep an no. eye on... Why not? I don't have to give you reasons, Desmond. If Warren's too fat, that's her problem. Oh, now get to work. Yeah. Come on. Right. Here. I'll get sister. Right. 